<clears throat> Looking for a new job, it's tough. A change of scenery, it can seem quite daunting at first. And there are a number of challenges that you're probably not even aware of. I mean, you have to prepare for an interview, but we often take the first step for granted. We don't think about those bells and whistles and tweaks that we can make to that first step so that we get ahead of the competition. I'm speaking from experience on this. About five years ago, I was in a position that was just, it, it was becoming monotonous and I didn't see much value in that role anymore. And I mean business value. So I took it upon myself to start looking for a new position. As competent as I was as a designer, I didn't understand resumes. I didn't understand the, the importance of subtle nuances within the resume itself, which essentially separate me from the competition. So I did the first thing most people do, which is I went online and I found the most amazing looking resume. It had serif fonts, sans serif fonts, gradients. It looked like a website. So I've been a manager for the past four years now. And I'd say on a daily basis, I receive up to eight resumes. And within those eight resumes, I probably put through at least four into a first stage interview. And there's a reason for that. And that's essentially the purpose of today's video. I'm gonna showcase various methods that you can create a resume which is going to serve its purpose, and get you into that first stage interview. Where do we start? Okay, so the first thing to consider is your resume is going to go through a journey. So in order for it to reach its end goal, it's going to have to reach a number of touch points along the way. Touch point number one, the recruiter. A recruiter doesn't understand the intricacies of your field, but they will be making use of a database. Now that database will essentially collect keywords and descriptions which are relevant to the role that you're applying for. Now, don't get me wrong, as well as that, the recruiter will also be evaluating certain aspects of the resume, such as employment history, how long they've been in that role. And you will be asking the um, potential candidate a number of questions related to their skill set and their experience. But for that first stage, when that resume gets through, when you have, say, 100,000 resumes, pretty accurate number, going through your system, you're going to be relying on that system to pick those keywords that match what you're truly after. With that in mind, the first stage is you, as a potential applicant, have to ensure that you are including all the keywords that you need to include for the sake of context Let's say you are a UI designer and you need to ensure that within your employment history section that you're including keywords within those responsibilities. So it's not enough just to form a narrative. You need to include words which are going to be picked up from their system. Now let's move on to touch point two, the hiring manager. And once I receive your resume, I am going to be evaluating it more from a specialist point of view. I will have business goals in mind, but I will also be considering if you're a good match for my team and a good match for myself as well. Now, how do I do that? Now, without going into too much detail on this, I can evaluate your persona within the responsibilities section of the resume. So for example, depending on if you include collaborating with people within your responsibilities, what your day-to-day -day activities are in a job, if those responsibilities don't focus on efficiency and competency and teamwork, then just from that alone, I, I, I can kind of tell what you're about. Or I could be completely wrong. And you don't want to give us any leeway to get things wrong, which is why you need to get that section right. So key things to remember when you're including information in regards to your responsibilities is, Discuss responsibilities that showcase your efficiency and your competency within the role. And additionally, if you have collaborated with people, which I'm sure you have in some way, always find a way to include that as well, because that is vital from a managerial point of view, looking at how you will connect with the team. Touch point three could potentially, potentially be the team. Now the team won't necessarily be evaluating your resume from the perspective of a manager in terms of business goals. It's not to suggest that the team don't care about business goals. Notice my smirk there. But they are very, very cautious with who joins their clan. So they will be looking at the intricacies within your resume which showcase how you will work as a team with them. And that's why I suggest be very careful in terms of what you include in your hobbies and activities section. Because people are biased, and I know that's not politically correct, 
But hey, better I tell you that. The reality is the bias is so subtle, you can't prove it when it comes down to it. They will find another excuse. So I know someone who went to an interview and they told me that everything went perfect and then they met the team and the team didn't like the fact that that person wasn't a vegan and the feedback they essentially said that they felt that he didn't care enough about the field people can find ways they can find ways to eliminate you as a candidate so keep your hobbies and activities generic it can be fun but as long as it's not something that can elicit some sort of reaction from someone who disagrees with your point of view Now, in terms of your skill set, like I said, the the team members are specialists in their field. So they really are going to be breaking down every skill set that you include. So if you are a designer and you include a skill set, for example, related to coding. So if you state that you know SAS, but you don't know SAS, don't include SAS. And what I mean by that is if you've if you've played around with SAS, just be wary that if you go into an interview, that whoever specializes in that field might ask you questions about that specific skill set. And if you're not prepared, then you could come across as being dishonest. And dishonesty is a big no-no, even if you didn't mean it. I'm sure, I'm sure you're a great person, but just be you. Make the most of what you know. And I'm sure you know a hell of a lot. Don't over-convolute your resume because people can see through those traits. Keep it simple, concise, to the point. Regarding your employment history, you want to tell a story from the first job that you ever had, whether it be freelance, contracting, uh, from when you were in a junior position to midway to to, uh, a senior role to management. You want to give across this journey of progression. So when you're writing your uh, responsibilities within the employment history, make sure to create some sort of narrative so that it flows and we can see your accomplishments over the years and get an understanding of who you are as a person at this first stage. You might be wondering, as a designer, what about the look and feel? What about it? Of course, that plays a large role as well. As a designer, you know what you need to do. Keep it simple. Simple. Don't overdo it. You can find a free version of the resume right here. You don't have to make it. I've made it for you. Yeah, I'm great. Go in my description, you'll find a link to a free resume. You'll notice that that resume is made in Word document format. Now, the reason for that is because we want your resume to be easily accessible to recruiters, each touch point. Additionally, if you want to support the channel, you can also find a premium version as well, which will include four variations, essentially be branded in different ways. If you want to give it a little bit more oomph and create something that's a little bit more impactful, give it a go. That's it, guys. Be confident in your ability. Take care. If you have any questions about the industry, give me a shout. Anyway, peace.